Hey YouTube, Dread Joker here, and today we're going to be taking, taking a look at my oldest master grade. The original GM from the original Mobile Suit Gundam. This is a very awkward kit. This is only slightly better than the original GM that they produced in the high grade line way back in the day. It's still a fun kit, and you can get it for around $20, $23, so average, modern, high-grade price. This is not a fair comparison for the price point, because this should only cost maybe, maybe $15 at most, given construction. So, let's have a look at this. Take a look and see... All the weirdness. Number one, this thing is very line heavy. I do love this. It's very, very well detailed for especially how old it is. This kit came out in, I want to say, 1999. So this kit's already 20 years old and still holding up. It, let's give it a little spin here. It does have the traditional GM backpack here, but this is only one of two variants that this set includes. And if anyone comments why my hands are black, well... You spend all day working on a car, there's no amount of soap in the planet that gets it all off in one shot. But the articulation is pretty good. We got a uh, ball jointed neck, no giggity giggity or anything like that. It's actually just one joint up here and it's all the way around. The clear part is actually just a straight up clear. You have to do the coloring yourself. I did not bother with this. I think it looks fine. Especially for how old it is. I wanted to see the detail behind there, but eh. It does have an opening cockpit, and I'm going to have to be very careful with this. These yellow vents I should have glued down, and over the years they have decided to start springing off. It does have an opening cockpit. Opens, you know, as a cockpit would. And this being one of the older kits, it does have... <clears throat> The Core Brock! Yes, this kit is so old, it still has the Core Brock. There's no L here, it's an R. Core Brock. So, maybe this is what Brock was doing in Pokemon during the offseason, being a Core. I did paint this up using Sharpies because this was just a very, ugh, shade of gray. But they work great, uh, I just use a metallic set, just get this all capped off back here. This being as old as it is, I had to tighten up every single joint on this using the only glue I had on hand, so I Gorilla glued everything, including the feet. Because this guy would not even stand. You look at him, he, fall to, he fell over. But the knee, you're looking at 90 degrees across two joints, so 45 each at best. Double jointed arm, but again, a little over 90, and that's all you're going to get. Held on by polycaps here and down here. Once up here, so you have a nice thigh rotation, go, or thigh, bicep rotation. Goes all the way around. Uh, you got a little bit left and right here, heavily blocked, but not by the skirting. It's actually by the design. This goes into a part, and it just doesn't want to work. Hands are very dated. These are the original, original Master Grade hands, which by modern things would probably put these closer to the hands on the old Master Grade wing kits, but the ones on the wing kits are a lot better. So it has your ball jointed thumb, your elongated trigger finger, and your standard three. For accessories, you do get quite a bit with this kit, for being what it is. As far as leftovers go, um, you do get enough parts to... Uh, maybe, if you knew what you were doing and started scratch building, you can build maybe the upper portion of the Gundam's head. But, as far as alternate parts go, you get the Gundam's backpack. And this is canon for one, maybe two scenes of the original Gundam. Because for whatever reason, the original GM, in a couple of scenes, had the Gundam's beam rifle and two beam sabers. 
Other accessories, of course, you get the shield. I really like the lining on this shield, and it gets deep. I lined everything, and of course, the lining started to melt. You get the bazooka with a holder that you can actually attach to the back, but doing so makes this already top-heavy kit very back-heavy. You get the Gundam's beam rifle. The complete beam rifle, that joint is just exceptionally loose. So is the handle down here. You put it up and, yep, there it goes. Rounding out the GM's arsenal, we have its little itty-bitty beam spray gun or beam pistol, if you prefer. The final accessory we get with it are two beam sabers with the old-style curved blades, or maybe mine just got hot. Yeah, one of these is severely warped. I think mine just got hot. To hold the beam sabers is real simple. You just slide them into the hand, wrap the fingers around, move the thumb down for better position, wedge it all in there, and negotiate. It holds it. It doesn't hold it well. This being an old kit, go figure. You're on ball jointed hips. You're looking at the full extension here. Moving the front skirt up, and yes, this is split like this. You do not have a choice on this one as far as I know. That's how far forward it can go, so you won't even need to have it fully extended. And as for backwards, that's it. Moving around back here, we do have... Like on the old kits, you had these hidden thruster details on the inside of the legs. I like these. I hate the joint. I've busted this joint like too many times on some of my other kits. Getting it turned back around here so I can see what I'm doing. We can rotate it on the base and we can take the ball joint here and tab it into this open slot here. This will let him hold the, yeah, no. He wants to hold it, but right now, please do not let that thing go off. He will not have any children if this happens. You do have a slot in the hip where you can stick the beam pistol, so he can technically hold all of his accessories at once with a bit of modification here and there. The bazooka is fairly standard. It is the exact same one that the Gundam comes with, except mine has the little pipe back here completely broke off over the years and cannot be repaired. It would slide into this section right here to further secure it, but to get it off, you just go where you would just... Originally, you would slide it up and then pull it off. This is a solid piece. This is basically just two things of plastic you slap together and then put a cap over. Two caps, that's it. I like the idea of the bazooka. I like the storage option, but this ball joint is one of the ones that I believe I might have forgotten to adjust. Switching out the backpacks is incredibly simple, assuming you didn't glue it. You just come back here, push the thrusters, and it... Well, you just hold on to them, but then the backpack just falls off because... It's old. Then you just put the new cover on, and now he has the two beam saber holes, so you can take the beam off of one side and just rest it in there. It just rests in there. There's nothing holding it in there. No cap, no nothing. This is all right. It works. Just don't turn them upside down. Don't do a shake test. Spinning him back around, he does on his left arm exclusively have a shield port. This is a poly cap in here, so this can be used with any 3mm peg. And this has four of them, only one of which is actually used. The other three are remaining for the handle. To get this in stably, you put it in around the hand first. Take the handle off first. Get it, negotiate with it to get it in its hands. Promise it a promotion and a vacation. Or an early retirement if it keeps going like this. Attach to the second ball, so, or the second peg. Then attach the entire assembly into 
the poly cap and he holds this absolutely no problem. This is the most solid accessory on here. See? The shield is solid. His elbow isn't. This being an old kit, I cannot and will not compare this to a Master Grade. Master Grades are not this um, quirky. If this is available and the GM 2.0, which annihilates this in every way, shape, and form, is not available, this is a nice stand-in. The accessories are pretty good. Mine are just very, very loose. Here you can see I'm holding the beam rifle. It works. Scope's just a little loose. He absolutely cannot do the double-handed shooting position, not without some major assistance. None of the joints want to cooperate because these joints up here in the shoulders are static. These are just pegs that come out of the body. That's it. They just come out, so the arm can do a full, unrestricted 360, assuming, you know, there's no big barrel in the hand. The beam rifle is a little too heavy for the hands, but the beam spray gun, however, is just perfect. So it's ironic that the one weapon the GM was shown using for pretty much the entirety of the anime is the one weapon it holds right. It holds... Very good. It's loose, but it's all right. My opinion is a little mixed because I like this thing. I like what I paid for it. I like the fact that it was a nice, simple, easy build. Barely challenging in the least. The negatives are the really, really dated articulation and the general lack of stability in some areas, namely the elbows. If those areas were better, I would highly recommend this for beginners or anybody. But as of right now, I cannot recommend this unless the 2.0 is not available. If you have any questions, comments, etc., please leave them down in the comments section below. I'll be happy to get back to you when I can. Thank you very much for watching.